Lord's on. Good afternoon. Welcome to today's edition of A Time Out with Tony. I am really excited to welcome today's guest, somebody I've known for a long time. And, and as you hear his, his story, his testimony, you're going you're gonna to understand why I'm excited to have this gentleman here on my show this afternoon. So without further ado, I know his time is you know, busy, and I, I, I'm happy I could snag him for today. But I want to <laughs> introduce to you Mr. Larry Young. Larry, say what's up to the people. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate you uh, having me on board today. So, so Larry, let, let's jump right into it, man. I often, I always ask my guests to tell us a little bit about their background. You know, give us, give us a bio. Who, who is Larry Young? And, and, and I think that's important because, I, you know, for some people who may know you and the others who are listening to this podcast who have no idea who you are, just give us a brief, you know, synopsis of who is Larry D. Young. Okay. Um... Larry D. Young is a, uh, a 55-year-old husband, uh, father of three, grandfather of three, um, who, who enjoys life. Uh, let me, let me uh, also uh, make certain that I uh, share that Larry Young is also a Christian. I'm a true believer in, in God. Um, see, I'm a, a, a guy that has been in corporate for some 26 years up until uh, two years ago. And um, I embarked on this journey of being a uh, personal fitness trainer uh, full time. Uh, and that's what uh, has led me to, uh, to be here with, with you. Uh, things have been going pretty, pretty well for me uh, in this, this venue. Uh, and I'm pretty excited about what, uh, what lies ahead for me. That's that's fantastic, man. And I appreciate you letting people know that you're a Christian, a man of God, and a man who strongly believes in, in the word of God. So for those who are listening, the reason I asked Larry invited him on today's show is because we are in the month of February, we're turning a page to a new month of March. And usually at the beginning of the year, a lot of people make, you know, these commitments, whatever you want to call them, that they're going to get in good in shape, work on their health, right? Oh, they yeah. make all these promises and all this whatever they did. They're, they're committed at the beginning of the year. So I, I decided that I was going to invite Larry on, who's a per certified personal trainer, to talk about this topic, um, not just from a theory perspective, but also because I am one of those individuals who made a commitment as part of my vision for this year, and I shared this in a few shows ago, that I was going to make a real concerted effort to improve my health. Not that it was in bad shape before, but I wanted to even improve and take it to another level. Um, after surviving the COVID-19 virus. Once I got out of that hospital, I said, I'm going to make sure I'm going to do whatever I can to continue to work in my health and strengthen my immune system to, you know, just so I can just be in better overall health. So I sought out the, the services of my brother here, Larry Young, man. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what he does and his service and all that. But I want to back up real quick, Larry, before we move into that segment. Um, talk about the role your parents played and the man you've become today? Um, hey, I'm a, I'm a product of, uh, I, 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 say it this, I say it this way. Um, I grew up um, in a single parent home, uh, but my father was in my life. Um, my parents uh, taught me the value of uh, hard work, uh, dedication, uh, your word is your bond, um, and naturally they taught me, um, they introduced me to, uh, to religion. Uh, I come from a real religious background, uh, with aunts, uncles, and, and the like that are, uh, you know, preachers, deacons, any, uh, choir directors, <laughs> musicians, you, you name it. Um, but again, uh, what, what my parents instilled in me was, was hard work. You get up in the morning, uh, no laying around, get up and make, make something happen. That's excellent. So let's jump into it, Larry. You, you, you talked about it a little while ago, how you segued into personal training. Um, again, how did, you know, what, what drove that passion? You were in corporate, the corporate world and something happened there. Obviously, you, you changed careers. What was the driving force that, that led you to become a personal trainer? Well, I, I'd have to say I'd have to go back to uh, our days at West Roxbury High School. Right? That was a long time ago, yeah. right? Uh, but uh, if I go back to West Roxbury High School, being a um, 
being an athlete, playing, playing basketball, running, running track and those, those things, something happened to my body as I, I would exercise that I really, I liked. So it was, it was uh, physically and mentally stimulating uh, the things that would happen as I exercised. At that point, I began to uh, continue just being, you know, a person that believed in being, being in shape, right? So I was always doing something to stay in shape. Um, you know, once uh, you get a bit older and the basketball goes away, you start thinking of other ways that you can keep yourself healthy, stay conditioned. Uh, and I started to do things in the gym. Uh, so as I started to do things in the gym, I like that a bit more. Uh, so I continue to do that. Um, and years later, um, I'm a person, I, I love challenges, right? So when it came to being in the gym, one, you know, one day I decided to think about, well, what would it be like to really know what you're doing, right? So I want to master things that I do. So I'm in a gym and I, I'm really paying attention to form. I'm reading uh, things on, you know, how to execute in the, in the proper way. So I, I want to perfect the way in which I train myself. And so uh, I decided uh, that I would uh, sit for the, uh, to be a personal fitness instructor. Um, it was just a challenge. I just wanted to challenge myself. The, the, the biggest thing for me was to make certain that I could pass the exam, right? Mm -hmm. I, I had no intentions on having clients or anything like that. That was, that was the furthest thing from my mind. If, client, if clients came, then I, you know, I'd work with people, but I just didn't, Think that it would be something that I'd, I'd see myself doing uh, full time. Um, so I became a certified trainer. The gym that I was going to spoke with the manager over there, well, the owner of the gym, and um, he shared with me that you know once I became certified, he'd bring me on as a consultant. Uh, I knew a lot of people. I had no idea that people were watching what I was doing. Uh, and when I became certified, they asked me if I would work with them. So I started working with you know different people at the gym that I was at. And uh, before long, I had a, a pretty decent clientele. Uh, so it really was, uh, it was a progression. It was something that I, uh, I, I appreciated. I had a passion for uh, conditioning myself. Uh, and then I wanted to take it to an entirely different level where I, I knew things that uh, people paid someone to teach them. So I, would, I knew myself and then um, you know, again, just, just being a, a person that uh, I'm, a, I'm a caring, sharing person. Um, that's where it comes in, where I, uh, I trained, I became a personal trainer. Excellent. Now, how long have you been certified, Larry? Uh, I, was, I, I attained my certification in 2010. So I'm uh, in my 11th year of being, of being certified. Excellent. Now, throughout my travels in, in the athletic world and, and, and even outside the athletic arena, Larry, I found a lot of people call themselves trainers. Everybody's yeah. a trainer nowadays, right? Whether it's for a specific sport, particular this, whatever, or personal trainer. Everybody, it seems like a lot of people call themselves trainer. For my listening audience who are listening, what should they look for in a trainer? When they're selecting, you know, they decide, I'm going to get in shape, I'm going to work, and I'm going to make the investment to work with a personal trainer. What are some of the things that they should look for? Well, one of the things, uh, the, one of the critical things that you want to uh, look for is uh, someone who has some sort of credentials, right? Because there, there are a number of people that are self-taught, and there are different things that happen to a person's body. Uh, and that you need to have some sort of knowledge, insight on what you're doing and what's happening to that person's body as you are uh, instructing them to do certain things. Uh, the thing that I pride myself in uh, is ensuring that uh, folks don't get hurt. My, that's the biggest thing for me is I, I can't afford you to, to, to get hurt. Uh, it, it bothers me uh, mentally and the person is bothered physically, right? So first thing is, is someone has some sort of background knowledge and formal training relative to uh, how the body functions and it will respond to uh, things like resistance training and cardiovascular training. The second thing that I think is, is very critical is ensuring that you have somebody who is well-rounded. And when I say well-rounded, you want, you, you should be looking for someone in a trainer uh, that understands that 
uh, people learn in different ways. So you have to be a good communicator, right? If you're telling someone what they're doing and why, and they don't understand it, um, you have to figure out, well, how do I say it another way so that mm. they do understand it, right? Because I'm doing this to ensure that you get what you want out of it. It's not what I get out of it. It's what you want out of me sharing what I know, right? right? So um, there's a few other things that, that, you know, that I would share. But in the beginning, I'd say you want to make sure that someone has some sort of formal training um, when you're thinking about, uh, you know, what, 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 a, what makes up a trainer. Because the, to that point, Larry, you know, having an experience, having some credentials, meant that they took the time to do the next step, next step, right? To get certified. But it also offers a layer of protection for you as the consumer, right? I mean, you wanna make sure this person is insured and everything else in case something, God forbid, does happen. You wanna make sure this person has all those things in place before you decide to become a client of, of a, a personal trainer. Absolutely, absolutely. You wanna make sure that they do have those, I mean, besides the credentials, uh, that that's on the, the business side of it, right? Uh, you want to make sure that that sort of stuff's in place. Uh, oftentimes, you'll find a trainer, and the trainer may not have uh, the insurances and, and those things. But if you, if they're a part of a gym, the gym has the liability insurance that covers those that are functioning as a trainer. I think the other thing that's 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 really important too, Tony, is when you're looking at someone who is a trainer. Um, you really want to spend some time talking with that person and getting to know uh, just where they are, right? Because being certified is just entry fee to the game, right? Uh, you're gonna learn the basics when you become certified. You really learn what it means to be a trainer and how a person's body responds to the things that you're asking them to do uh, over time with experience. Right, so you, a person has to be really open. And when I say a person, I'm, I'm referring to the train, has to be really open to accepting the fact that you don't know everything. And each and every day, you're gonna learn something new about, uh, about how you work with, uh, with, with the client. That's, that's excellent, excellent points. To, so I wanna ask you, Larry, I, I know you deal with this all the time, people coming to you about fitness and training ideas. What are some of the myths about getting in shape, you know, I, I mean, I, and, and is there a difference between what men think and what women think when it comes to getting into shape? Because you know, I, I know as a man, you know, from being from the old school, we always think getting in shape means I got to lift all these weights and get big. But you know, working working with you over the last month and a half, I, I, I've had to change my philosophy on that because you do it completely different. So, what are some of the popular myths you have to debunk, if you will, when people come to you and say, "Hey, I want to get in shape. I want you to train me." What are some of those myths you have to debunk? <laughs> That's probably the best question <laughs> that you could, you could throw at me. Um, you are absolutely right. There are definitely differences between male and females um, in terms of goals and their approach to fitness. Uh, oftentimes, uh, when I work with uh, males, uh, the first thing they want to do is they want to lift weights. That's, they, they just want to lift weights. Um, I, I will ask guys, hey, you want to check, check out a class? I'm doing a class or someone that I know I, I'll, I'll support and say, hey, you want to check out a class? No, I'm not doing the class, right? Uh, then when, they, when, when guys take a class, right, they go into class and say it's a bar class or whatever, they, they go for the heaviest thing in the class, right? Because they see the ladies with the uh the, the 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 10 pounds so they go 20 and i kid you not four minutes into the class they can't lift <laughs> with, with they, and they're doing it with with nothing in their hands right? right uh because they look at things as if these uh this is a woman's thing and um you know we have this um Thing with testosterone and, yeah, it's that and male ego. you can say it. it's that male ego that yep, it, that ego, yeah 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 right and then you know with 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 women they're a bit more disciplined so they're and they're open they're open to what you're sharing with them uh they come in and they come in usually um just just waiting for you to tell them what what they need to do they come in trusting where uh, again 
a lot of males come in and they come in with what they already know and sometimes they're apprehensive about taking on some of the things that you are trying to show them. Uh, as you had stated, you know, my approach, I take a holistic approach when, when I train. So, you know, uh, oftentimes guys are looking to, you know, build, uh, build muscle and they think the only way to build muscle is to, you know, is to lift weight. And um, that's, not, that's not it. Well, when I say weight, they want to lift iron. Right. right. I, I do things where we're using bands, use, you know, your personal body weight for resistance, uh, balls for balance. Um, and in your your most times, uh, if a person commits to it, they're going to come out better on the other end than if we went with strictly weights, um, especially as you get as you get older. All right. Because you start to. Uh, you get tight from the weights. If you're not doing anything from a cardio perspective, your muscles start to contract and then you don't stretch. And before you know it, you're, you're just, you're just stiff. Right. right. Um, and so it's um, that, that's a, that's usually a, a big challenge, you know, when it comes to the difference between uh, males and, and females that I work also, with. What I've discovered, Larry, working in your program you know, there's this, there's again, another myth is that I got to be in a treadmill or bike running miles to get in shape, work on cardio, but your, your whole circuit routine, everything you do has a, a it taps into the cardio as well as strength and endurance. Yeah. Which, well, yeah. Like, like, like I, I said, just a second ago, uh, I take a, a holistic approach, right? So I believe in strengthening the entire body, right? So I'm going to go into a bit of, <laughs> Uh, what I talked about earlier real quick, right? I believe that your body is a temple, right? And you only get one body and you're blessed to have that body and you are supposed to take care of the whole body. So when I say I take a holistic approach, I don't just work on strengthening and conditioning. Uh, I share stuff with those that are with me, uh, like what are some of the things that you're reading? Um, not just nutrition and what, what you're eating, uh, what are you listening to in terms of music, right? Because those things impact how conditioned you will be, right? So if you're being drained and pulled down because you're, you're having some challenges with, uh, with life, that's going to impact how you feel, how you approach exercise, how your body is going to respond to the things that, that, that we do, right? So, uh, you know, to, to your point, the question was, you know, the uh, just treadmills and those things. What happens is your body becomes used to routine. And once you get used to routine, uh, you become stagnant and your body doesn't, it'll, it'll remain the same. But if you really want to continue to see your body develop and you want to get the most out of the body that you're blessed with, you have to shake it up and twist it up every now and then. And that's what, that's what I love to do. As you know, when, when folks come to me, um, you have no idea what the routine is going to be uh, because I, what I do is I look at what the individuals, how they responded to the last uh, session, and then I make an adjustment to the next session to complement the previous section session. That's, that's, that's fantastic. And you said something that I want to, I want to go back on about you know coming to you and, and about actually when you do your own program and I'm guilty of this you know I would I would do my own program and then eventually I would become stagnant and I would I would peak out and then I would just you know eventually become routine and then mundane like anything else my body got used to what I was doing and I didn't change up my workout you I mean there are people who don't need a personal trainer to do that if you have the discipline to change your workouts great but that was one of the reasons why I decided that I was going to you know hire you for your services man because I wanted that different next level someone who right. would challenge me and I would put my body through a different workout to see if I can maximize and, you know, get back to a competitive level of just being in good overall health. And as you mentioned, holistic, I wanted to, to piggyback on that. You take a holistic approach. I want to ask you, because we started off by talking about you being a Christian. How much being a man of God does that play in the role in your services you offer that you're of Christian faith? How, what role does that play actually for you as a personal trainer when you are offering your services? Or does it come into uh, play at all? Uh, I say yes and no, right? And so the reason why I say yes and no is because I'm not a, I don't, I don't view myself as a, 
a man of God in certain situations, right? So I, I, I feel like I am who I am every day, all day, right? So uh, if I'm training, I'm not going to change who I am. I don't change stripes because I'm training someone, right? I, I believe that, um, you know, we're all here to, uh, to, to be a blessing to, to others, right? That's, that's, that's what we're here for. God is love, right? So we're here, um, again, so we can be a blessing to others. And I look at the way in which I, what I do for a living um, that, that sharing, that's allowing people to better themselves in, in some form or, or fashion, right? I mentioned your body is your temple. You only get one. If I have just a little bit to do with someone uh, being better today than they were yesterday, then I take that and I, and I, feel, uh, I feel good about that. I feel good about what I do. Um, and I know that, um, you know, when you take that approach, uh, you know, the man upstairs appreciates you you doing those types of things. And, 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 and here's, the, here's the big piece, right? So for me to do that and to do it with passion and to do it with the conviction that I have, people will ask you, right? So what is it about you? Well, mm -hmm. they may not ask me, what is it about me? They'll ask themselves, there's something different about him. And when they ask that question, they open the door, right? So I don't force it on anybody, right? But I live my life in, in, in a way that if um, people can see that there's something different. I, I hear people say it all the time. And if they don't see it, I'm, I'm not upset by it. You know? <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. And the word of God tells us to be the light of the world, right? So people can see that. I, I, I concur with you that people can see the difference in you. Uh, and, 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 and it will be something that that will attract people to you yes, just to get exactly. to know you, whatever that is. And, and then they'll watch what you're doing. And as you alluded to earlier, when you were first starting out, someone's always watching you. We tell exactly. our young people all the time, right? Someone's always watching you. And I think as adults, we forget that at times, but people are always watching your walk and talk, whether it's to compliment you or to critique you, they're watching. Right, right. And, and you're right, they can see a difference in you when you really are someone who's a believer of God. I want to talk from another perspective. Now, I've been asking you what should people look for when they come out looking for a trainer. Now, I want to speak from the other side. What goes into your decision on who and whom you decide to work with? Okay, so that's that's an interesting. That's a, that's another interesting question, um, and I do have some history with that. So. Uh, for me, anyone who comes to me, I'm willing to I'm willing to work with. All right. So uh, I have people that that come to me and they're so sedentary that um, I've created routines for them where uh, we spend the majority of the time. I have them sitting down and, and standing up because they're just not conditioned to do much more than that. Right. Um, so I, my door is open to, to anyone who wants to work, right? Um, and the key word is work. I, I cannot exert the energy that I do because I'm passionate. When, when, when I work with you, I'm working with you. You have my undivided attention. One of my pet peeves is when I see trainers training and they're talking to everyone in the gym while they have a client. Uh, that's to me that 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 just doesn't work, right? right. Um, they your client should have your undivided attention, right? Because again, I talked about people being hurt and, and that sort of stuff, right? And and that's real big for me. If you're not paying attention to what they're doing, all it takes is a second for someone to do something and tweak something, and 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 then they're down and they're out and they can't continue, right? <laughs> um, but the work is the, is a critical piece. Initially, I won't know that. And I tell folks when I first meet with them that, you know, when you sign up with me, let's not do anything long term to begin with, because you need to make sure that I'm a fit for you. And I need to make sure that you're a fit for me. Right. Because if you're not willing to work, uh, I put a lot into what I do, man. I put I put a lot. I, I, I put hours into um, looking at my group and looking at every person as an individual within my groups. And I just don't have the, the, the time to, I, I'm, I'm a motivator, I'm an encourager, but if you are an anchor and you're, 
determined to pull yourself down, there's not a whole lot that I can do to pull you up when you have an anchor mentality. Right? Mm, and that's if that's the case, if that's the case, I can't work with you because I'm, I'm exerting myself to a point where I'm exhausted and I have to bring myself up so high to, to work with the other folks that really want to, um, you know, work in, in, and see a difference. So it's not often that it happens, but it has happened in, in my career where I've, uh, had conversations with, you know, a person or a couple of people about their work ethic and what I'm seeing just so that they can see what I'm seeing and perhaps I'm interpreting it incorrectly. Right. So I have the conversation to make sure that I'm not missing something. And when you come back and I say two to four times, I come back to you and tell you that I need a little bit more. We need to do this. Am I missing something? And it stays the same. It's stagnant. Um, that's when I have to uh, make a decision that it's just, it's just not working. And, and I'm not one, and I, I'm, I'm going on and on, but this is a, just to let you know how, just, just where, I, where I stand, you know, uh, I'm not one to take someone's money and run, right? Mm -hmm. When you pay me, you're paying me to take you to levels that you don't take yourself ordinarily. And if you come in and you meet with me and you're not ready to go there, I'm taking your money and you're not getting the service that you paid for. And I'm not that guy. I just can't, I can't, uh, I can't look myself in the mirror knowing that I did that to someone. So that's very key, Larry. It's, it's not a money grab for you. You're, you're doing it because yeah. you're serving with a heart of love to help people overcome or meet that next level or whatever their challenges that whatever their, their goals are, your heart is open to help them meet that need. No doubt. Make sure that they get the value for their dollar. No, I want to take a minute yeah. here, Larry, because I know people are listening and the people, I'm sure, I'm sure someone's excited right now. They're like, I want to know this, brother. Give me his information. <laughs> How can people get in contact with you, man? They're listening right now. You, you, they're motivated. They've made their resolution. They've, maybe they find themselves falling off right now. They said, I need to be with this brother here. How can they get in contact with you? The best way is to uh, send, me, uh, send me an email. Uh, you can reach me at Larry at FY Wellness. So that's F as in forever, Y as in young. Larry at FY Wellness. Uh, you can find me on Facebook under FY Wellness, Instagram, FY Wellness. Uh, and if you visit those two places, you'll get a, a glimpse at some of the stuff that I, that I do. I do, I love uh, posting my people. I love, uh, you know, empowering them uh, when they see themselves and they see the things that they're doing. Um, you know, it's real hard to look at yourself, you know, um, you know, just from the, from the outside, it's, I mean, we, unless we're in, in a mirror, right. You, you don't see yourself. Uh, but when I uh, do these videos of people and they come to me and saying that they can't do, and then we work and I show them what they can do. And then I put, put it on in a video format um, in terms of the empowerment, man, it, it goes, it goes through the roof. So, you know, the other thing that I, I will share about that, if you do visit, um, you know, any of those places, and you see someone doing something, you go, I can't do that. I meet you where you are, right? So I don't, I don't say that you're going to come in and I'm going to have you, you know, bench pressing 225 pounds, you're squatting 375, right? I, you're running a marathon in two weeks. No, it's a process. And I meet people where they are and uh, develop programs for that individual. That is so key, Larry. I, I appreciate you saying that because... I was thinking, you know, as I, as I knew I was going to be interviewing you, I was like, what differentiates Larry's services from anybody else? And just from personally working with you, my wife and I, who've been in your class, one of the things that I found that differentiates you, and I'm going to ask you to give me some more in case I missed this mark, that differentiates you is that you have this ability to be firm, but yet understanding you push people to the past their limits that they maybe think mentally that they can't get to, but you also know when to back off, man. You, you, you walk that line very well. It's a fine line, and you know that because some people don't know how to walk that line and balance that line. You do that very well. What else do you think differentiates you from other trainers out there? Um, I'm not sure if I'm that different from uh, trainers that I, I consider really good. 
Um, the, the thing that I pride myself on, man, is I'm passionate about what I do. When you're passionate about what you do and you're committed, um, it just takes you to, it takes you to different levels. Um, I, I love people. I'm a people person. Um, I, I love to see people succeed. I like to succeed. I think everyone wants to be on a winning team. Um, if I have to coach and I'm coaching, if I'm, if I'm a role player, I'm a role player. I just want to, I just, I really just want to, you know, I really just want to win. So, um, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that, that's, pro that's about it. I mean, it's hard to, you know, really, I'm not one is it's kind of hard to talk about yourself. You know? well, I that. that's, why I to, that's why I prefaced it by what I said. And, and I've seen it in action, Larry, because obviously, uh, I, I come to your sessions with my wife and my wife and I are, are two different people, different personalities, two different body types to what all the things you could say. And, and, I, and I watch how you balance working with, with meeting my needs and then also meeting her needs. And, and they're different because I'm a former athlete. You know that. So you, you, you tend to tap at me a little different than you do with her. But she is loving the, the, the sessions. I'm going to tell you that right now. She is enjoying the sessions. And I'm happy yeah. because. I don't think we see that enough from couples working together and, and having that goal of working out together. Usually the guy does his thing by himself and the woman, the wife may do her thing, but it, it's, it's also rewarding to see, see your spouse working and taking health seriously, right? It's, it, it's gotta be fun for you as the trainer to see that when you see a couple come to you, come together on a Saturday for your sessions or whatever, to see a couple come through the door working hard together. No doubt. Uh, what, what happens when, when you have uh, the couple coming together, right? So remember I talked about it being holistic, right? My approach is holistic. So when I have a couple there together, they're hearing the same thing from me. They're hearing, you know, the, the things like, um, you know, when we met, I was asking you guys about diet and that sort of stuff, right? So if you're going, if someone's on this journey to be as fit as they can be, and they have a spouse, a partner who could care less about it, there's going to be some times where things are somewhat different, well, potentially uh, different in terms of dedication, what's done outside of the exercise, right? Because again, it's holistic. It's what you eat, it's what you think, it's what you read, right? Th those types of things. And when they come together, um, they're in a place where they can encourage each other, they can push each other, they can challenge each other, and at the end of the day, they can celebrate together, right? So that's that's the that's that's the key, and that's what I I really dig about, you know, having having couples in it together. You know, um, it, it's big too. I mean, like you know, you had mentioned that, um, you know, two different folks, right? And as you know, my my class is more than just you and 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 your wife, right? Um, and so it's. Um, it's a it's a group. I'm I'm training a group, but within that group, I make certain that everyone is an individual. And if I treat it as just a group, someone's going to miss out. The athlete is going to feel like it's not challenging enough, and the person who may not be athletic may feel like it's too challenging. So you have to find that balance where everyone feels like they're getting something. Uh, out of the out of the sessions, and so um, especially when again with, with the couples, when you can go home and say, "I did this, I did that," right? I'm pushing this person this way, pushing that person that way, but you both come back saying, "Those lunges killed my legs." Right. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> By the way, just so you know that. <laughs> right. So yeah. So that's that's it. I uh, you know. I, you have what I call these Larryisms when you like to, you say things that that really are, are helping me expand my mental capacity on working out and changing my philosophy on it now because you know yeah. I, I, I'm I'm from an old school like you are I've been doing it this way for a long time, but one of the the, the things you you did you said to me when we were working on crunches, the first time you had me doing it in your class I've done crunches before, but you said something to me that I it, it like it stuck like a, a magnet in my head you said something it was we're trying to activate, not annihilate the muscle. And I didn't understand what you were talking about because you know, you, you see people going to work, they're going crazy, doing all these ab crunches. They may not be doing them correctly, but that was 
It was profound. It was simple, but profound. So talk about what that means, man. When you said that, what does that mean to the person that's listening right now? Activate it, but not annihilate the muscle. Right. So just so that everyone knows what I said, it's stimulate, stimulate don't annihilate, friend. right? No, 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 right? Stimulate is, is we're, we're working on stimulation, not annihilation. So oftentimes people will do something and we'll use the crunch as an example, because that's one thing that, that you, that's the thing that you just shared. Uh, people will do crunches and sit-ups and they will come up so hard and so high that they feel like they have to squeeze. If you're using proper form and you engage your abs and you breathe the right way, you're stimulating the abdominal muscles. And when you stimulate the muscle, it's gonna allow you to work it for a longer period of time. The longer that you're able to work it, you're going to create flexibility and strength with that particular muscle. If you are trying to beat it up and beat it down every time you uh, exercise it, that's what's going to happen. You're going to beat it up and beat it down. And the likelihood of you having uh, that type of strength and flexibility uh, becomes somewhat uh, limited, right? So, um, you know, as I, you, you know, when, when we're talking about exercise, I'll tell you guys to constantly move. We want constant movement. The reason why I say constant movement is there's a, um, like you said, back in the day, we, we, pro we didn't really pay much attention to it, but when you get older, it's important. And the way that I train is I focus on functional movements, right? So I train so that when you're not exercising, what you've done, you strengthened yourself so that your, your um, the quality of life is impacted. Right, because there are plenty of times when uh, folks get older, with some younger folks as well, but oftentimes you hear of older people slipping and falling. And, and, and a lot of times that happens because they have not uh, done exercise that creates balance, haven't done exercise to stimulate those twitching muscles. And so they'll trip over a shoe and not be able to, uh, gain their balance and they'll fall like a tree. If you do these types of exercises where you're stimulating the muscles, the muscles get used to working, they get used to working. And when it comes time to, um, you know, when things start to happen, you're in a better place, you're better conditioned to protect yourself. I mean, you, you, it, we, we all see it. You see folks that um, sit, they sit around a lot and when it's time to get up, they got to grab the back of the chair, the front of the chair, and someone else got to has to grab their arm in order for them to get up. They just can't stand up, right? right. So if we do things, um, you know, the right way, where I have you stimulating the muscles, you get so used to doing it because you're doing it so constant and consistently that it impacts your quality of life, and that helps you long term, especially when you start to get, you know, as old as me. <laughs> Well, you, know, you, you always have an eye towards the future. And that's one thing I appreciate you for your sessions, Larry. Someone right now, Larry, is, is listening to this podcast or they're watching it on YouTube and they're thinking about pursuing this career as a personal trainer. What advice would you give to them? Uh, I would say that um, right now, this, this field, it is saturated. So you do need to really uh, differentiate yourself. Um, if you go on, you know, uh, Instagram and all that, you, and you look, you see, everybody's a trainer, uh, as you had stated, you have folks on there that are doing virtual training. So that's becoming somewhat saturated. So it's not, it's not, it's not easy. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, so if you really want to do this, you need to really be passionate about it. Uh, we talked a little bit about the, uh, you know, the money. Right. So it's not something that you want to go into looking to get rich. Right. Because that that's likely not going to happen. Um, right. So you need to be passionate about what you're doing and the other stuff follows. Right. So um, someone's looking to get into it. The biggest thing is this. Ha you have to be passionate about this. Um, 
have conversations with those that will give you some true feedback. I, I believe that if you're going to do this, this is my personal opinion, you need to be a good communicator. You have to have patience. Um, all those, all those, a lot of those, those characteristics that come, I mean, you have to love people, right? right? You, you, ha you have to be a people person and you have to be able to communicate with people. You have to, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I said, you, you know, the patient, um, professional, right? That's a critical piece of this as well. You, you definitely have to be professional. Um, you know, and you know, I'm going to say this, and this goes to one of the things that I, uh, when you asked me about differentiating myself, uh, so I think about this um, when, when I look at training. And this is, I try to make every session fun, mm. right? Because if you go back to when you were little, right? Or not so little, right? Basketball, you played basketball because you loved it, right? You didn't realize how in shape you were. You weren't playing ball to be in shape. You loved right. the game, right? So what I try to do is channel people's vision so that they're not thinking about exercise they're thinking about having fun they're thinking about doing something and trying to accomplish something and when they do that you take your mind off of exercise they're willing to push more because they forget about how tired they are right um how much they would give up if it was just exercise right so I attempt to do that with everything that I do when I'm training. And here's the other piece that's critical to that. As I'm running around and I'm smiling and I have this energy, by no means am I lacking on uh, the seriousness of what I've been entrusted with, right? So mm. I'm doing this to make sure that the person is not thinking about um, exercise, because I'm doing that for you. I'm paying attention to that, but you don't need to know that. You just need to have fun. If you have fun, I'll get you there. Just have, just join me in the fun. I'll get you there. I'll pay attention to that stuff, you know? Larry, in closing, I just wanted, for people who can't come to you because they're not in your area or in your state, are you offering virtual classes? Are you, are you in that level where you're offering virtual classes? I'm I'm working on that. I do. I have. Um, I, I did a it, plug in my, myself a little bit. <laughs> I did a, a a video for a local television uh, station, and they aired it on. Uh, I believe it was YouTube and uh, and Instagram. And so I've had a number of people, family members, and and, and the like, ask ask me how I can how they can do some of the stuff that um, that they've seen me do with others. So I am pursuing that um, that that avenue. Uh, I'm not there yet, uh, but it doesn't mean that folks can't you know look me up, stay in contact with me uh, because they if they want to work with me, they know they want to work with me. I don't know they want to work with me. So when it does happen, I can then reach out to let them know that I am now offering uh, virtual or some sort of way in which we can. Um, uh, do this remotely. That's a, that's excellent, man. I want to close by asking this last question, Larry. Again, I, as I started this conversation, I said we are now moving towards the third month of this year, right? And, and at the beginning, everyone has resolutions. They're excited. They're motivated. But we've now hit that first quarter, right? We're hitting that first quarter. What are some of the keys, if you can, real quickly, some keys to, that people can use to keep going? Because, you know, we, we may look good, do it just to look good for the summertime, and then we kind of slack off again. We go through those cycles, those cycles, those peaks and valleys. What are some of the things that people can do to maintain and sustain and keep, keep going? I think the first thing that, that uh, you need to do is you need to write down what your goals are, right? Because if you have them here, right, the mind can get weary. But if you write down your goals, right, you can refer to them. And when you write down your goals, you start to feel uh, weary and you, you, you're thinking about giving up. Uh, then you ask, you, you try to remind yourself why you started doing this to begin with. And if you look at your goals, right, sometimes that will help you um, and, and uh, you know, just give you that, that extra push that you need. Uh, I think the other thing too is if 
you're you're feeling like you know I'm doing it again. I'm just I got everything going on. You're making a, a, excuses. Um, you know, you have to perhaps look into, you know, bringing on someone like me to, you know, to, to change up the next few months, right? So similar to how I said, stimulating the muscles, um, you need to do a change up. Sometimes that's what happens initially, right? You exercise, you're doing the same thing. You feel like you're going nowhere. I, I'm, I've been doing this. I'm tired of doing this. Bring someone in. You can bring someone in for one session. You don't need to hire them for a number of sessions. Bring them in for one session. Say, I'm looking for someone to revamp uh, my routine. Do your homework, right? Do your homework because you don't want to have someone come uh, to you. And like I said, they're talking to everyone <laughs> while they're supposed to be working with you. So do your right. homework and get someone who you feel is going to um, uh, uh, get you through and, and that'll work. And always remember, right, when you set your goals, if you if you if you identify what steps you're going to take to get there, um, I think you'll 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 be fine. You can always reflect on that. Larry, what you shared, I hope the listening audience learned a lot from this session. I know they did. I'm confident that they did. One more time, man. Give the people your contact information because I, I know people are going to be reaching out to you, man. That they're, they're going to have questions, and you know, maybe we didn't get to it during this interview. But I want people to be able to reach out to you, man, because at the end of the day. We're not talking about just getting in shape for vanity purposes and vanity reasons. We're talking about making an impact on some of those numbers that are impacting, particularly the communities of color, bringing those numbers of diabetes cases down, heart. We're really talking about making a sustained, conscientious effort to address a lot of those problems that are within our community. That's what we're really talking about in this whole interview here. And you have a service, man, and, and people, I think you could hear, as you heard throughout this interview, the man has a heart to help people. So Larry, give you your contact information one more time. How can people reach you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's Larry at FYWellness.com. Or you can find me at FY Wellness on Facebook as well as Instagram. And one more point, you made a great point there in, in your closing, right? That if you're in this just to look good the summer, uh, most likely uh, it's not going to work for you. And that's where you're going to lose gas, right? You have to make a commitment to a lifestyle change. It has to be a lifestyle change, a way in which you're choosing to live your life in order for it to work. Well said, brother. I, folks, you can see why I was excited to have Larry on today. I, I, again, I knew that he was going to bring the fire. He, he's, a, he's a man of God. He's genuine. He's passionate. He cares about what he does. And I can tell you from personal experience, what he does works. He kicks my butt. I, I can't believe I'm still paying this brother that I actually volunteered to kick my behind, kick me in the rear. But, I, you know, I said I wanted to do something different. I wanted to try. I had to get past the fear of that and go ahead and step out on faith and try something different to see if I can get different results. And I am happy and well pleased with the results that I'm seeing. And I know if I had my wife in the, in the interview, she would speak and say the same thing. So, Again, I like to encourage you if you're being encouraged by this podcast, Larry. Thank you, thank you for being the guest today. I want to make. Some thank statements. you, man. It's my my pleasure to to uh, to to do whatever I can to help, man. And uh, um, many blessings on what you're doing. You, you're you're doing a marvelous job in uh, uh, reaching folks and and bringing some some really uh, some real uh, renowned speakers, man. So congratulations to you on this. Thank you, brother. For those who are listening, again, if you are being encouraged by the podcast, and I know you are, I've gotten some great feedback from you. Feel free to reach out to me again at timeout at TonyRPrice.com. That email, once again, is timeout at TonyRPrice.com. Love hearing your feedback about the guests and uh, topics we should be discussing here. Remember, I always end by saying, until our next timeout, be safe, give thanks, and look for opportunities to encourage and serve others. Now it's time to get back into the game. God bless.